So this is a comment response video for episode 139 on doom scrolling. Um, let's take a look at some of the comments. In the doom scrolling video, I, I really went off on the idea that uh, Thomas Aquinas, the 13th century theologian, talks about the idea, the fundamental idea that, uh, that built into the moral fabric of the universe, the absolute core of the universe is this idea of um, that human existence is oriented towards striving for the summum bonum, which is the, the ultimate good. And that uh, digital media, that, that particularly social media and doom scrolling create a, um, a traumatic, decentered, a disassociative, violent, and violent uh, uh, picture of the world, uh, which in turn, in turn, fundamentally alters um, who we are at our core. In this comment, what we see is that um, theater in a fire says the world is traumatic. The world is pain. If you ignore this or recognize this inherently and live in spite of it. Uh, so while your analysis is true, it is fairly superficial. Consider the micro, the individual with the macro, the Twitter feed, simulacra, and stimulation. Yeah, so coping strategy to deal with personal trauma. You're a member of a global community of the traumatized. Various subcultures of the traumatized exist. If you feel bad, you see bad in the world. Everyone sees the bad you see, feels the bad you feel, and in the same ways as you have connected and you have love addiction, tries to mask trauma with a ritual of positivity, but the world is traumatic, the world is pain. Well, I couldn't agree more, but that's not the point. I think the fundamental point is to attempt to come up with more productive ways of dealing with that. The world is traumatic. Uh, it is violent, it is decentered, it is uh, debased and corrupted. But the point for the individual, I, I believe, is to find agency within that and to find a productive way of navigating those issues, negotiating and navigating those issues. And I'm not suggesting that we turn a blind eye to, um, to pain and trauma. I'm suggesting that we deal with them forthrightly. I'm suggesting in this video that steeping oneself in it, that the dooms, that, that, that Twitter, uh, Instagram to a degree, but uh, Twitter and a lot of social media forms, the, the news and your news feed, really are, are, um, are, are debasing in a number of ways. They, um, they, they decenter you, uh, they steep you in uh, hate, rage, uh, negativity. They debase you, but, but further what they do is they create a kind of zombified doomer ethos. So I would agree that, uh, that the world is debased, that's for sure, and traumatic. Prince of the Klein Skyline 2984 says, it's difficult for modern man to reconstruct the foundations of ritual from scratch in an era where we toil amongst the ruins of a civilization, civilization torn asunder by individualism. So this is a, this is a major issue. You know, when I'm, when I, when I'm thinking about in my own life, when I'm trying to diagnose what, what the fundamental problem in, contemporary technological culture is. It's, it appears as if one of the major roots of the problem is, is the supremacy of the individual, of individualism. I, I, I think we see a degree of narcissism in our culture. The inability to see anything, to, to understand anything outside of the, the perspective of the individual who's perceiving as one of the fundamental one of the fundamental issues that we're, we're grappling with, the supremacy of the individual, that my rights are the things that are invaluable. It's my belief that our, that, that meaning, I've talked about this in probably the last 15 videos, but it's, it's my belief that, that meaning itself is constructed through responsibility. And I'm talking about that on almost every level. I'm talking about that with responsibility to our family, to our, uh, tightly knit but broader community, responsibility to the wider community and to the globe, but even responsibility in things like problem solving and a job. So, you know, to a degree, I, I, it's my belief that the more we eschew responsibility to others, the less, the less, um, the less meaningful our lives become. And, and I think that 
this this commenter here, Prince of the Kine, of the Kline Skyline two nine eight four, has diagnosed things accurately. Has diagnosed things fairly accurately here in uh, in suggesting that individualism uh, is at the root, potentially is at the root of one of these one of these problems. At North Star ninety two says. I imagine I still gained something and it helped me cope with trauma, but I still haven't dil diligently studied enough to draw what I've learned from the immediately accessible conscious part of my mind. Everything I think I believe I'm still noncommittal about after dropping out of college and stunting my development with weed, video games, and, and isolating while circumnabulating interviews, lectures, and life advice. I'm a lot less comprehensible to talk to, especially when I don't have time to collect my thoughts. Responsibility really is the best medicine for others like me, but I worry I've passed the point of no return. I'm a huge proponent of discipline, and um, I, I mean that in, in the broadest sense. So if we see, if we look over here, uh, I can't see it right there, but if we look here, hang on a second. If we look at this as an example, this is just yesterday's 15 minutes or 20 minutes of, um, of uh, the practice of drawing and painting. So it's my belief that the discipline, <clears throat> the discipline of exercise, the discipline of painting, the habit, the productive habits in our lives, those, those, are, those are incredibly important components of a meaningful existence as well. And I'm not talking about, I am, I'm really not talking about discipline in the, in the notion of denying, uh, necessarily denying ourselves of uh, worldly pleasure. I'm talking about productive habit. So when this person, when uh, at North Star 92 talks about, um, I worry I've passed the point of no return. I, I don't believe that, you know, I'm a runner and I, I try to run literally every day. I try to, I'm, I make sure that I, I paint and draw every day. There are a number of other things that I, that I involve myself in every day as a practice and as discipline and, and as a habit. And if I fall off, if I fall off, what I, what I, what I do is I simply, um, I simply attempt to, 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 to reestablish the habit. And I think that, you know, I talk to people, uh, some of the people that share these, uh, share these, um, concerns in my environment. Uh, and when we talk about the idea that really, the goal is the pursuit of excellence. It's not the pursuit of perfection. So I know a friend of mine, a close friend of mine, uh, does something similar. But when they when they fall off from the practice, what they end up doing is they end up going into kind of a negativity spiral. So with regard to um, North Star ninety two, when they say you've passed the point of no return, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe there is a point of no return. I think what happens is uh, development. Uh, personal development and, and discipline is uh, is a task that happens slowly over time, and it is something that we return to over and over. And again, I'm not talking about a kind of self-flagellating uh, negative discipline. I'm not talking about denying oneself things. I'm talking about positive and constructive habits, you know, like drawing and painting, you know, like this kind of thing, like drawing and painting, um, or or um, running, or any other discipline, playing the piano, practicing music. Um, yeah, so what do we have here? How do you reconcile social media as a tool that can advance an artist's career via networking, sales, et cetera, while simultaneously recognizing it as a net negative for the artist's work itself? To me, the saturation, homogenization, and disposability built into these platforms is antithetical to the creative development of an artist, and yet SM engagement, social media engagement, seems more and more an unfortunate necessity to an artist's professional development. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, it, you know, so many of life's truths are only partial truths. So many of life tr life's truths are, are paradoxical in nature. You know, I, I'm railing against, in, in this doom scrolling video, and in a lot of my videos, I'm railing against the... the um, the negative effects of technology, particularly social media, on our culture, how debasing and decentering it is. And I, and I, and I do think that, you know, Instagram, as an example, uh, has created a kind of life cycle for the artist and has created a, a, a series of extremely uh, negative um, after or effects for the artist or the creative individual, right? Um, 
the capacity to constantly feed the algorithm and feed the beast, and the fact that the only thing that matters is the the image at an at an incredibly small size, not the craft. That the natural the natural environment for so many artists' work is in fact Instagram. Those things are those things are. I don't think that those things are positive. You know, um, creating artwork for TikTok or creating artwork for YouTube. Uh, not visual essays, but actual artwork. I think that's a really negative thing. But I do agree. I, you know, the, the hypocrisy in all of this is that th those are the tools of our time. Those are the ways in which people uh, learn about other uh, other artists and designers, writers, creative people's uh, output. They're not learning about them through magazines generally, and so therefore, to to deny that, th th to to step outside of that system, you're dooming yourself to irrelevance, uh, not just irrelevance culturally, but irrelevance financially. Now, are there exceptions to the rule? Of course there are. You know, can somebody, can somebody not have an Instagram account, uh, not have a, a tw Twitter account, not have YouTube or any social media and be successful? Of course there are, there are exceptions to the rule. But I think that you, one needs to embrace these tools and to deal with them in a, in a, um, in a mature way and to try to have self to try to an artist or a designer has to have a lot of self discipline and self knowledge to know whether or not they're in fact creating specific work that functions only in that in that milieu and whether or not that's a positive thing let's see i'm well beyond 20 years old and i do go through this doom scrolling phase a lot being responsible quote unquote purposely staying away from politics when i'm on social media looking at other artists or I get this overwhelming sense of negativity and hopelessness. It should be something positive, but now instead I feel like it's a platform for them to reinforce and inflate their egos with humble bragging crap through their artwork. Everyone competing for attention, for celebrity status, following the trends to stay on top of the blessed algorithm, etc. To add to it all, all those annoying bullshit AI ads up eating up space. It's depressing. I just switched off. I used to enjoy drawing and illustrating for the past few decades, but with this artificial con construct, now I don't know what's the point anymore. I refuse to participate in this wanker club. Something died to me. Perhaps I'm just a bitter old shite noggin. No, I don't think that you are. Um, this this overlaps with exactly what we were what we were talking about. What I was talking about in the in response to the last video. I I, I think that. I think that it's super important not to forget. I think it's super important to make work that is, I think it's super important to make work that is soul sustaining and that, um, that does not rely on approval of clicks and approval of social media in order to be self sustaining. Uh, so I understand the feeling. But I think that w what this this is is this comment. This comment really reflects the decentering that I'm talking about. That I refuse to participate in this wanker club. Something died to me. Perhaps I'm just a bitter old shite noggin. I would suggest you just go about making your work and finding an audience for the work. I talk about this with my graduate students and with myself all the time. I believe that work, that artwork, design work. They exist as an intermediary between subjects. In other words, they exist between, uh, it's an object that exists between two people. I don't think that they exist in a vacuum. I think that you need to find an audience for your work, even if it's only one other person or two other people, small community of people. That's how you sustain work, you know, not necessarily through likes and through clicks. That shit is bullshit. I mean, you know, again, we have to participate in that. But the most important thing is the soul sustaining characteristic of making, making our uh, expressing ourself or making uh, art, design, poetry, writing. The, the individuals I've met who have, quote unquote, artistic independence have all have always also had vile slash misguided morals. What one may see as the ability to quote unquote work hard is usually just the ability to micro violently debase others as well as themselves on a consistent basis. Many of their life choices intentionally position themselves as God, placing oneself above nature and others, using, abusing, leveraging, in an emotional word, hurting, for what? To be the center of other people's universe for a moment or longer, there is no imaginary bravery or goodness in this map that simply charts out how to become a perfectly fitting cog that seeks to climb itself up the engine in order to have its own motion move the other cogs. It's only a map to control, or in your word, responsibility. You twist this important word away from goodness, which would be 
responsibility for the well-being of yourself and your fellow mankind instead of your self-righteous bloodline and possessions. But hey, maybe I'm dead wrong. I'm bitterly speaking from the perspective of someone who can't seem to climb out of the abject horror of my dead-end customer service front-end desk job routine with very little time to work on my art that only seems to resonate with myself. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is, again, this is very valid. Um, I totally disagree with the very first sentence or the first three sentences. The individuals I've met who have quote unquote artistic independence have always also had vile misguided morals. What one may see as the ability to quote unquote work hard is usually just the ability to micro violently debase others as well as themselves on a consistent basis. Uh, I don't. I don't agree with that. Um, now, you know, as an example, I hesitate to hold myself up as an example. And you could say you're not independent. You're 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 being paid by uh, by Cranbrook Academy of Art. Um, well, I don't view it that way at all. Although that that may, uh, in, at least in part, be true. But there are are a number of uh, of people that I know who have who sustain themselves from their work that I don't think are, 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 are debased. And, and I don't think that they are, um, violent. Uh, and I don't think that they are, what's the exact language here? Uh, vile misguided morals. I really don't believe that. Um, the other point that you're getting at here, is that I'm bitterly speaking from my perspective of someone who can't seem to climb out of the abject horror of my identity customer service front desk sh j shit job routine with very little time to work on my art. Uh, I think that you need to approach that more s systematically. And you know, I I did I did I, I made a video called Art Artistic Independence: Escaping Mom's Couch with Diagrams. I've seen the, the, this process work over and over and over again. But basically, it's a pro it's a it's an exercise in problem solving, and it. It is it is extremely difficult to do that, but benchmarking, you know, basically, to to, to make it very simple and uh, to give a one sentence or two sentence version of it, it's about first understanding that artistic independence and better jobs are a gradation. They go from terrible to complete freedom, and that what we do generally is we ascend, um, we climb up that ladder. And so the next step in the process for you would be to uh, to benchmark the, to, to to research the next step in the process to get away from the customer front end front desk customer service job, and to find more agency, more something that's more sustaining for you, and then to to uh, solve that problem systematically. So again, artistic independence, escape mom's couch with diagrams. That that process that I that I outline in this in this video I think works fairly well. So I would suggest that you you, you attempt that, and I and I I uh, support you in your efforts there. Okay, so that's it for this episode. I will uh, see you on the flip side.